Hey, hello everybody. Okay, well, five. Ah, oh, jeez. Uh, for those watching the stream, uh, it's currently 8:35. My internet cut out two minutes before stream time, and casually uh, just came back after a reboot, and then wait for the device to go on. Everything's having a fun, not working today day. Uh, but anyways, I shall I shall resume the stream like normal. Pretend that nothing's happened. So, hello everybody, welcome to the stream. It has been a stream. It is the fifth of September, twenty twenty two. I hope you're having a wonderful week, or have had a wonderful week, uh, and are starting a new wonderful week. And if you haven't had a wonderful week, then hopefully this stream is for you. Let's jump into it in a moment. Here we go. Here we go. Oh boy, the shortcuts aren't even working. I I hooked up shortcuts and they're not even they're not even gone. Okay. Uh cool. At least I can tab out. <laughs> I'm gonna try my best. Uh this is this is a completely duct tape stream, but anyways, I'll be continuing on with Tomb Raider 2. And uh in the last stream, uh Lara was on an offshore rig and dove down to the bottom of the depths to find lots of water. Yeah, it turns out there's water down there, so... Uh, we are now in the living quarters, or at least as I remember, uh, mean level that puts a switch behind this wall. I remember looking around here and going, eh, what's going on here? Uh, and especially if you're perusing the levels with the level skip code, yeah, it's a level that starts off in the water. So you have to... You can't do the level skip code until you stand up here, so... Uh, but yeah... No, I've been having a, a field day with technical mishaps all over the place. We've got... Hello there. It's been a hot week since I've played this game, and I haven't played it in September yet. Also, yeah, happy September, everyone. I hope no one noticed at the end of the last stream when I forgot uh, August 31st was a date, but I totally did, so... Whoops. That's okay. Um, yeah, yes, my favorite living quarters area, the, uh, the room with the pistons. Um, yeah, so I guess the big thing that I'm having a bit of a mishap with is, uh, one, my network setup is, uh, also, hi there, camera peering up at a lever. That kind of indicates something. I guess you kind of have to remember that it's up there, though. I think. We'll see how we go. Hopefully no. They used to, the first game used to hide people around the corners all the time. And now... Now hopefully it's uh, a bit better. I don't remember it being as bad in this game though. Yeah, I, I take it back. I take it back. Oh, there's a shotgun guy. I'm in a corridor. This is the this is the meanest place to put two dudes. But sure, okay. Alright. Uh -huh. Um Well the good news is I'm not dropping stuff because of network. I think it's just uh the connection didn't exist for a hot moment. Uh, but yeah, yeah, lots of weird network issues. Uh -huh. It would just keep cutting out for a handful of minutes every couple of hours. And so I guess it doing it just before the stream time is also that's that's nice. That's cool. Just another guy. Another guy. Is he about to walk into the fire? Oh, he's about to climb through a fence. That's even worse than walking through the fire. Ah. Um. Uh, on top of that, uh, I've got a little Raspberry Pi on my desk, which I, I use for fun little things. I wanted to set up a little web server on it, and I know someone's going to go, why are you setting a web server that's uh, pointing to a device on your network? And I go, because I'm not sharing it to the world. I just want a little fun thing. Uh, but alas, and all of this fire is on, I think... I want to say you can dodge past it. Let's, let's give it a try. Um, but uh, then then I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to apt uh, upgrade. Uh, apt update and upgrade on the Raspberry Pi. And suddenly, uh, there appears to be new firmware pushed to the Raspberry Pi. And it breaks, or not breaks, but it changes the behavior of the LEDs. 
and I was like, oh, this is like an eyesore on my desk. So I turned it off uh, before, and now it's like, now it's something completely different. And every single Stack Overflow answer I found didn't answer it until I found one person who mentioned, hey, this got updated. This is it's really annoying to have just behavior change on you like that, but sure, okay. Hopefully there's something over here. Oh, there's a switch over here. Cool. I do remember having to do something in order to climb over there. That seems like a real funky jump, but... There you go. Turned off all the... Torches. Maybe there's more torches. Because I'm looking at this going... They didn't expect me to, like, climb in from... Nah, nah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was I was like, that feels oddly backwards if I sequence broke. I don't think I don't think I'm capable of sequence breaking a Tomb Raider game, but we'll see. Ah, there's another well, there's another switch up here. Okay. And I hope you caught that. That was two frames of uh something happening. Well those are boxes that you push, I guess. Sure. And oh, I'm back in this room. I'm is this is this the room I went to? Was this the, the doorway I went down? I think it is. Okay. So I'm now here and the pistons have moved in a certain way, which allows me to climb up there. Hopefully. Uh yeah. Fortunately I haven't had any hardware break on me, but uh you know. That's a, that's a cursed thing to say. You jinx yourself if you say that. Go. Bit of a leap. There's a secret over there. That's the switch, but it's on the wrong side, so maybe maybe we hit something on the other side. Uh, but yeah, no, no. Technical things aside, uh, the stream will go on, and uh, worst case, if any internet cutout happens, uh, well, if you're watching the stream right now, then as in live on Twitch, then uh, I hope that the uh, the connection doesn't cut out. But if it does, the full thing will be on YouTube uh, and I record it directly, which means no network interruptions happen on the YouTube stream. So if you're watching this on YouTube, no issue. I don't believe this might be a bit of a leap to get back. We'll see. Um, on top of that, I did the dumb thing of... You have a... Did I just get shot on the- that- I didn't even click in my head just then. Uh, you ever do the thing where it's like sometimes like you- 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 I don't know, you're talking or you're- you're breathing, it happens, and uh, you accidentally just breathe in a bit of spit? Uh, I got- I caught it like so bad on Friday, my throat has just absolutely been shot. And it's the worst kind where it's like, it starts going to like reflux mode, like constantly, and it's just- it's the worst feeling. I'm like, reflux mode isn't even the right one. It's like, if I've, if I've like, swallowed something, or like, breathed something down the trachea. Trachea? Trachea? It's like, should, shouldn't I be like, coughing all the time? I'm able to get some pop shots on this guy, and he's hiding behind a wall, so... Let's see if I can... I guess he's probably not going to come out until I do the jump, and then he's going to come directly here. Come on, man. Try me. Try me. There you go. Got him. Easy. Easy money. Hello there, Mr. Crip. How are you doing? Hopefully you didn't miss the uh, uh -huh. first five minutes of no stream because uh, my internet's having fun times today, but... Alas, the show will go on. At the very least, it looks like things are kind of working now. In that case, then there has totally not been any network problems whatsoever. This looks like that just leads back into the same room. So if I keep pushing this, maybe uh, this will illuminate. Uh, something. I guess this uh, this ledge means that I could uh, push, or rather, I could um, come back to here from that one ledge that I jumped to. 
Uh, okay, well, <laughs> sure. So that yeah, so the pit on my left. I've already been in that room, but because the blocks were blocking these doorways. Oh, okay. Maybe I gotta go back and pull this. So if I pull it one more, then whatever I just pushed it into are now not blocking. I think that's the intention they're going for here. This is, this is fun Tomb Raider Puzzles 101, I think. I was blocking shotgun ammo. That's not really... Uh -huh. That's not really anything that worthwhile, but... Sure, okay. See, the problem is, is that this doesn't pull back into anything. You didn't get, uh, get banned on SMP stream was the reason why I couldn't open the portal. You open end on tech uh, support works and forgot to close it. It took the egg and achievement for it, but other two achievements still on your account. In that case, it's a win-win. So I think in that case, if I push, yeah, if I pull that switch, then I now have the ability to uh, go back and the pistons are now up the other way but I'm also on the high ledge now so maybe that's the the big intention I was expecting more of a secret up there though well that's good that you didn't get full banned uh, yeah yeah so now the pistons are the other way around. It kind of doesn't really look like they've gone in any directions. But, uh, they took her shoes with the weapons. Uh, they didn't take her shoes. She had a regular outfit on when uh, I started on the ship one. She took her shoes off to go uh, swimming. And she's also got her pistols on her side still. So. so you'll never be in this game without pistols and shoes. It's one or the other. I still, I still swear that, like, you probably wouldn't, like, hurt yourself if you're not wearing shoes, but you'd definitely, like, be slipping all over the place, because this is, like, way all, like, rusted metal in, in a sunken ship. But speaking of sunken, just absolutely flood that room. Uh, so now, well, I've, I've hit that switch, so that's, that's big target number one. So... I got a couple of interesting topics to uh, discuss today. Actually, it would hurt at least in this situation. I mean, metal is not fun to run on, especially this kind of like corrugated iron bit with like the textures. And the, the texture is there to grip with your shoes, so you don't slide too much. But if you're not wearing shoes, well, your feet don't really help. So, so now I'm in this room. Uh, let's let's do a good save. Um, now I'm in this room. Oh, yeah, we've got the lever on this wall. Now I can activate this lever. And it's a swimming lever, so... And now that door is open. So we can continue the level. I remember getting really stuck on this the first time. Greetings, Blub. How's it going? Oh, we, we got the harpooners. We got the harpooners. Okay, they can't catch me. I'm going in this little tiny hole. And it's a dead end with a switch, which means I'm good. Oh, and there's a moray eel right there. Hello, Mr. Moray. Oh my gosh. Now I'm going to make it to that without drowning. And I just got eaten by a moray. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie. What? What? Is that actually the words? What? What is... I, I, I know when he says that's a moray, he's not saying that's an eel. He's saying... Uh, Amore as an Italian word for love. Uh, but I don't know what he means by when the moon hits your eye, like... Is that like... Oh, uh, like, sparkles, he came from Mario 64 to eat someone? <laughs> and, and also, like a big pizza pie, you know? Okay, let's just swim around the more...
I'm not doing a good job swimming around the moray. <laughs> I always wonder about like the Charles Martinet like Mario accent because like all Mario stuff before Mario's fundamentals it was and I know I said that my voice is so sharp but I'm gonna try and do this Mario's always like a hey everyone I'm Mario <laughs> I'm from Brooklyn I'm a plumber you see <laughs> it's like that and then <laughs> <laughs> and then Charles Martinet comes along, and Mario is just like, Hey, wahoo! Let's go! It's like that hawk's just still... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can still move when the camera's cut to something else, but it's just... Oh. Okay, yeah, I... Yeah, I had a lot of air, A lot of oxygen left. A lot of oxygen left. I'll tell you that. This is just... <laughs> That lever is just a room to breathe in. There's nothing in here. <laughs> uh, so I, I love the two interpretations of the Mario voice. And I think Mario's Fundamentals was... Was that 94? Wait, so there's this guy in here. I then opened this hole up. Oh, it was the close one. It was the close one. Okay. All right. Alright, new room. Understand what the room is. There's a guy shooting me already. Cool. Um... Yeah, what's with... I think it is not in original, but Mario is Italian. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why... Like... Like when they started doing Mario being Italian. I guess just the name Mario is kind of like... You know, probably take a guess. But I'm curious, I guess, like, what, uh... Who did originally design Mario for, uh... I guess it would have been Donkey Kong, right? They're just like... Uh, okay, we got two mystery levers. What are we doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm curious who thought that up. Really want to know. But, uh, good old Charles Martinet. He's been doing this for ages. It's gonna be very weird when, uh... He stops doing it. That was the first time when USA localization made something better. Yeah, yeah, I guess, um, and I guess the nice thing about, um, uh, the Mario voice is that, like, it's there in every region. Like, he says stuff in English, but it's just like, it's just the fact that everyone hears the Mario voice. Oh, do these platforms rise up? Like, if I tend to do. And it drops into. Uh, danger spikes. Okay, let's do the, the close one first. It's a drop scene. There you go. Okay. Uh, I thought I could do the jump there. Okay. Okay, crawl quick. Soup. It's a Super Mario shoot Super Show. I, I'm too young to have watched that, and also I don't even know if it ever aired in on Australian television. I know we get we get a bit of like British television, but I don't know. We don't really get like straight US ones unless they're crazy popular. Which nowadays, no, now we now we get so much uh US you know content. I don't know if that switch uh, will ever bounce back up, but we'll see. Um, yeah, yeah. I actually, I really do appreciate whenever games have kind of universal localizations and bits. Like, I understand a lot of games are probably gonna, you know, they're gonna put in voice acting, and the voice acting is nice if it's in the language of the, uh, you know, of the viewer. That's what I mean. I never showed it on TV in our country. I do know they had it on... What is going on? I know they had it on... Oh! I just realized Lara's hitting her head immediately on, on this. Uh, they had it on um, home movie or home video releases. Uh, so I know you can you can get the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, but I never watched it. I don't know much about it other than uh, various wine source dubs. And a handful of YouTube poops. Uh, 
those who, who know my YouTube channel know I enjoy my YouTube poops and uh, there does exist one based on the classic The Mama Luigi episode. I don't know if it was good. I laughed. I still used Movie Maker. So. YouTube poops, like, nowadays are like, it's a miracle to see subtitles, not even full Russian audio. I'm actually, I am impressed how many games nowadays come in, like, nine languages. It used to be, like, you would have, like, exclusively English on US versions of games. Um, it, you'd sometimes get Japanese on the same cartridge, but not often. Not often. Um, in Europe, and it extends down to Australia because we just get the same version, uh, you'd sometimes get the um, French, either Italian or Spanish, depending on what they feel like. Uh, sometimes the other one, uh, German, is often that one. Uh, you'd often get, yeah, German if... Maybe it's a five language cartridge. Sometimes six. Uh, I don't know what you'd get for the sixth one. Swiss sometimes. Uh, Far Cry series have Italian audio, but not six one. German. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of people who play games in German. Like, I, I, I definitely say, like, I mean, I mean, French is a lot. Classic big ones are English, French, Spanish, German for West. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but nowadays, it's like, you know, you, you quite often get, like, a, a Scandinavian language of some kind. Um, and then uh, Japanese, Korean, and sometimes a simplified Chinese ends up in a release as well. Um, so when I, I think I played, a, what was it, like, Pokemon um, sword, I know. It's been a while. But I remember, like, when you start that off, it's like, you get a lot of languages to choose from. And it's like, oh, yeah, no, that's kind of neat that it's not like, you know, that you do get all of them. I'm curious whether I go down the slippery slope. The internet makes translations cheaper. Um, yeah, I think it's that, and also that, like, localizations are not pressing on your cartridge size anymore. Like, it, it is trivial to have translations okay i'm glad i'm glad i made that big companies can just hire someone in our country yeah exactly exactly a lot of a lot of places can also um crowdsource the localization um if you ever um discord i believe has has that they've got like a website and you can just like view every single string of text in discord and then just like you know go this language it should be this uh i don't think i can safely drop down there Imagine how much people must sit in one room to understand <laughs> what this word means. <gasps> nah, nah. <laughs> I think I've got to swim back for that. Anyway, let's continue on. There's a full break. Who knows? I was secret number three out there. Secret number three is out there. You would have caught that. Some dramatic. Ah, that's a moray. When the moon hits your gosh, gosh darn heckin' moray. Uh, for smaller games you have uh, machine translations, and for good smaller games, fan translations. Yeah, I, I'm i always on the fence about machine translations, but I, I guess they're getting a lot better now. Um, Deep L is definitely, like, kind of pioneering the way of uh, translations that don't really suck so that's good uh everyone using uh english translation if we're talking about japanese games uh yeah yeah nothing ever beats like a, a truly handcrafted like um translation that's why does that drop down that's uh i assume slippery slope yep yeah, okay uh thing about video games is that uh most menus and stuff you can pretty easily machine translate um Definitely. And actually, one, one feature I really like out of the RetroArch is that you can um, pipe the screen into um, a, uh, a translation, like a, 
like a OCR kind of website that then translates the text on screen. Uh, and it's, so it's just like, it's just one button press and you can immediately then like you know, translate things, uh, which I think is really neat. Uh, in practice, it's uh, a little bit on the nose. It's not very good at detecting low resolution text. I mean, they used it for the language translation validation, not Japanese original. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely think you shouldn't pass off machine translated stuff as the original, or sorry, as like properly translated, but definitely, you know, it's better than nothing. I'm amazed I just caught that really hard just then. Uh... Yeah, I would still want to, like... I, I've always, like, got it as, like, a, a thing that I've got to figure out. Which is, I really want to figure out how, how to just read Japanese and properly, you know, start to actually play games that are in Japanese. I feel like there's a whole trove of, trove of games that I've just never played because they've never been available in English. And machine translation gets you so far, but it doesn't get you really far in the heat of action if uh, a patch isn't available or anything else like that. And even then, um, there's a lot of other games where it's just like, you know, there is a fan translation, but the, they only do the necessities. I think I found one for um, uh, for uh, uh, Itadeki Street on the PSP, um, and it's just like they translate like the menus, and that's it. <laughs> Cause like, oh, who cares about the character dialogue? I'm like, the whole point, it's a Dragon Quest Final Fantasy thing and you're gonna skip the dialogue. Uh, I like, I saw how in the PS1 era, uh, our pirate tried to translate Japanese except for the text part was really good, but cutscene translation. Yeah, that's the other thing as well, is that like, um, the moment there's any audio, uh, we don't have anything live to really translate it and, uh, it's a lot trickier to translate out. Um, I still want to figure out if there's ways of doing it. Oh, hi there. <laughs> Hello. Where did he show up from? Just, just crawled out. I hear another one. Oh, I guess he's not down there. Interesting. Oh, is that just... That's just a bit far away. Perhaps I've got to flood it with water or something. Uh, let's climb over this. In one moment, girls say that what, what we gonna do to father in the next. She does not know where is her father, but he didn't move from the chair. Uh -huh. I'd say like there's a there's a lot of classic like translation errors. Um, uh, one of the the most classic ones is uh, uh, the all your base are belong to us. Someone set up us the bomb. Like it's definitely one where like whoever translated that like either English is not their first language or. Um, or uh, it actually was a real rough translation at the time. Um, or they're dealing with some real horrendous like cartridge capacity limitations and they decided to do the most like stilted sentences to try and make it work. Because that was another issue of like games back then. That, that game was for the Mega Drive. And I know that there's a lot of games back then where it's just like, you know, they, they do struggle. Oh, that is a box I can push. Right? That is a box. Yeah, that is something you can push. <laughs> you can't push it too far. Yeah, you can't push it beyond this gap, but then... Where do you push it? I have the feeling you want it... Like, next to the ledge. So you can, like, jump up here and just jump up onto the ledge, but... I'll put it there. Or not. Uh, didn't want me to push it forward. Interesting. Uh, okay. 
Um, I'm trying to think if there was another like translation that was just like horrendous. I I know I know people have gripes with localizers and stuff uh, on the internet, and I know I I think I've probably said like a couple of things about it. Um, I think at the end of the day, it's like, you know, more interpretations are better than fewer. I do wish for generally accurate translations, but then it's like, I do really enjoy the Dragon Quest translations. And I know Dragon Quest translations, uh, the official English translations, are fairly different from the Japanese ones. Like, the Japanese ones play as a, as a pretty straight fantasy kind of setting. Uh, but then the English translations add in all these jokes and puns all over the place, and I, I think it gives it this like fairly neat identity, uh, all according to Kei Kaku. Yeah, that's a that's a classic one where like the the this, there are just Japanese words chucked in there. It depends on the game, definitely whether you get that or not. But uh, certainly, uh, yeah, it's like we could play it in, in two extremes. Basically, uh, in the 90s, how pirates realized that the word Russian translation was so much better for after the Soviet Union fall, not many people could understand English, and if it could take much time, and time is money, so they gave all the text the robot translation, didn't even see what it's done, just send the game on print. Fan translation, so... Oh, yeah, 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 there's a lot of sans and samas and... Sorry, san and sama. They don't, they don't do san. I don't think there is a long A in Japanese. Machine translations in the 90s, I assume it's like dictionary lookup and hopefully um, Russian language is uh, like, uh, what's it, is Germanic the word? Is, is Germanic the right word where it's like, oh, like he'll follow the same language structures. Um, I always keep, I always keep bringing up uh, that I did Latin in high school and Latin is great because I always like pick apart like things that happen in Latin and then it's like well they do happen in English but you don't know that they're actually happening until you, like think about it and go ah okay um because the, ni the nice part of, as well with Latin is that since no one uses it it's so set in stone it's just like that's Latin right there the worst you could do to Latin is add some words that don't exist uh well slow down <laughs> uh Oh, it was like, hold on. Oh, like they willy-nilly like swear words as well. Like words in one language that are like deeply offensive in another one. Okay, so I'm back in this room. Because I'm just thinking like, I don't have anything after swimming up there. I've got the key. I've got this box that I don't know where I put the box. Wasn't the story behind Steam that basically Gabe Newell had the idea to provide the games for really cheaper with easy to download in Russia so that Russians would buy them because the effort to download them would be far too inefficient? Kind of, yes. Like, I want to say Counter-Strike was really big at the time in Russia. Oh, I'm an idiot. It's the same puzzle as before where you've got the box and you're just going to, like, pull it back. Um... Torrents are definitely inefficient, and yeah, at the time it was like, you kind of want to preserve your, your bandwidth to the best as possible. I'm an idiot, I can't believe, like, it's the exact same puzzle of, like, climbing up this ledge. You know, you can, you can go from that box to the top of the, the ledge. Uh, I guess there's not really any reason to push it one more. And there's a, there's a key thing here. What is the, does the key thing open it? The key thing opens it. Cool. This is from GTA and Imagine This with 2000 uh, translation bot. Oh boy. Oh boy. 2000 translation bot. Hi there. How you doing? <laughs> I always wonder as well, because like, I know there's a lot of, uh, Cracker tools. Um, it's funny, uh, he not only gave us a wonderful quote to shut people up pushing for harder anti-piracy laws and a badly implemented DRM. 
He also gave us the hard data to back up that quote. Oh, check it out. I actually, I really love like when you get like these really abstract rooms in in like these old Tomb Raider games, and then suddenly here's something that like you can immediately identify. Like I know it just said theater room or theater key just earlier, and then it's just like, yeah, this is definitely a theater. Except the chairs are totally cheating because they painted the chair texture onto a block. Called it a day. Also, uh, we did not buy original discs because they cost much more. Gabe destroyed almost all piracy. 2007. We don't even have normal internet, so torrent not much popular. Disc is 400 rubles. Yeah, definitely, because you gotta like import the the physical copies and stuff, and it just doesn't sound like it's uh, great on the logistics. Whereas, like, if you could just buy it directly from overseas, have them officially license it once for Russia. You know, Steam is the biggest behemoth in the gaming industry. Even uh -huh. big publishers who try making their own platform, the end caved and, and brought their games to Steam as well. Definitely. EA, you know, longest stick outs on that one. They they undid going on Steam, thought they could take their own piece of the pie, and ended up uh, releasing their stuff on Steam because it just sold better. Yeah. Um, Ubisoft runs their own, but uh, they don't have, um, I don't think they've ever had an exclusive. Uh, Bethesda have retired theirs, that's how. It's good that Epic started pushing hard though. Yeah, cause, cause Steam still does stuff like it. They do a 30% cut and I'm like, you know, if someone wants to do less, that's the prime opportunity. I don't, like, yeah, I don't hate Epic. Uh, you play, yeah. Uh, um, good old games, uh, I think always should exist because it has a unique model, uh, but it's also got the, um, I don't think, well, Gog Go Go sometimes Sweden's, a, Sweden's the deal with a good freebie. And actually, at this point, they decided to print official discs with Russian translation because people don't want to buy cheaper but broken rush of it. Yeah, Gog has a nice niche. Um, and also, there's a surprising amount of, uh, I think Bethesda's got a handful of, like, the newer stuff on there. But not all of it, just some of it. Um, oh, I moved the box one too far, I guess. Uh, and then what other front-end sellers do you have? People, uh, because people had money, they started to buy the official releases. Yeah, that's, I think that's the big win-win. And... Like, you know, as much as, like, like, Steam has things that they can improve on, it's also, like, well, Steam kind of invented itself out of nothing and did lots of great stuff um, as a result of its, of its success, which is, like, exactly what you want. These big, uh, big uh, services to deliver on is, is pretty much beating what was already there, and piracy was always a big thing, and in uh, markets like that. Brazil is also a similar boat, where it's just like, why buy games in Brazil when they cost bajillions of dollars? A lot of my viewers are from Brazil, so if you're from a weird country, uh, a weird country is not <laughs> the best way to phrase it. Um, if you're from a country where you, like, your, your forms of acquiring video games is fairly different to the rest of the world, like, feel free to, like, Talk about also CS were popular in the 90s, but no one had a good PC. Almost everyone had Dendi, Pirate NES, and Pirate Mega Drive. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like the NES was a cheap system to manufacture, so there's a lot of like, um, yeah, effectively like a uh, remake version. So I was, I was gonna say knockoff, but like I'm pretty sure some are officially licensed. So say, uh, what you want about Pirate NES in Europe in the 90s, but uh, we only know uh, the full original intro of Age of Empires 2 because someone bought a copy in Poland and there was some late beta version where they still had the full intro not cut. Yeah, I, I also, I do love um, how stuff like that does seep through the cracks of like, uh -huh. you know, interesting cut content in there. Uh, later some devs confirmed to be the original cut intro. Everyone played computer clubs, we need to pay for each hour. Uh, talking about PC as a game platform, Japanese have only discovered PC as a serious game platform was recently in the last decade. Yeah, because, like, they were really big on Nintendo and Sony platforms constantly. And I don't know, yeah, it's it's really interesting that um, they never had, 
launch PC games. Uh, I know, like, there's some, I know, like, Final Fantasy 14 and 11 uh, are PC games, but that, oh, that's the end of the level. I always get shocked every time I see the end of the level. I'm like, oh, geez, yeah. Um, let's, uh, so this is the last level under the water, by the way. I just want to know, because uh, it's probably, probably going to be like, man, how much of this water stuff is going on? So this is, uh, oh, there's a bit of a drop. I'll be really interested to know how much of that is because they start to get better PCs, or if actually that one petition for Dark Souls uh, is successful on the PC side. I think the biggest thing for PCs, uh, if I had to guess, would be, um, like, Ease of ease of use, especially for uh, without having to understand the language. Like building PCs, DIY, and all that stuff is a lot easier than it used to be. Chips are so much more readily available uh, <laughs> before a certain thing happened in 2020. But even then, like you know, they're pretty pretty good on that front. Uh, compatibility is crazily good. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah, I think just the general trend of not having to rely on specialized hardware as much. Um, just in general, like, I, I, I know, I know home computers have always existed, but, um, even then, I guess, like, programming has always still been a kind of English-focused thing. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'm extrapolating a bit, because then it's like, well, I mean, you still gotta program stuff. If you're compiling it for like a Game Boy Advance, like a Game Boy Advance just compiles down from C, uh, or you could slap in some assembly code places. So I don't know. I don't know. I know of some projects where it's like there's a lot of Japanese in the um, in the source code. Also, the Xbox Series X costs seventy nine thousand rubles right now. Send help. Did I mention that? Yeah, the the PS Five increased its price last uh, last week, which is a uh, absolute absolute fun. No. Uh, it's a shame that those systems are... It's really interesting how different regions of the world have di distinct gaming patterns. Uh, yeah, definitely. And, and I, like, I mean, while we're on the topic of Japan, it's like, it's crazy to me how the Xbox has always existed and released in Japan, but it's like, it's like sales of the Xbox is like, you can count, like, single digits every, like, minute. Which sounds like, oh, that's that's fine, but then it's like, single digits every minute means like you're kind of selling like a couple hundred thousand in, in a year, which is a very low number in the grand scheme of things. It's like you want your console to sell several tens of millions, if not maybe up to a hundred million by the end of its lifespan. And here's a whole market where it's uh, it's selling like, yeah, a hundred thousand a year. Also, uh, when war only started, iPhone 13 gold price skyrocketed in 1 million rubles. Oh, oh. I don't know how other smartphones, uh, how their, their business are overseas. Uh, I can definitely guarantee here in Australia, it's like, iPhones are crazy pricey already. Um, most Apple products are. Um, so I just stick with a, you know, a, a good Android that you can get for... Like, legit, a new iPhone costs, like, 1200 1300 Australian, and it's, like, a good Android can probably cost you, like, 300 The best Androids, obviously, cost crazy amounts more, but... Uh... I have the Chinese bad for gaming because they used to pay so much for games... Oh, uh, used to pay much for games because they used to go to internet cafes or some of the games. So when pay to win came along, it was basically an upgrade. Now you pay, and not only uh, can you play, but you can win as well. Just for most info, most people we only got out 50k rubles a month. Ugh. I forgot what the Australian um, average salary is. I want to say it's about like 70, 70,000 Australian. So when there's a, you know, a graphics card released for a thousand bucks and you're earning 70,000 Australian annually, uh, it's like a week's of earnings, but then you got tax on top of that. Yeah, I, I, I ne I will not understand the 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 pay to win free to play market now. And I've not been playing free to play games for for a while. Like, uh, like Genshin Impact kind of changed changed the market. Not changed the market, maybe, but definitely shook the market a bit. 
And then, uh, I'm like, I don't know, I've not played it. I've seen mates play it, I look at it and I go, well, it's, uh... It's a game, I guess. <laughs> Former Soviet Union states are the crazy complex games like Stalker. I don't, I don't know, is Stalker 3 gonna ever finish? Man, okay, okay, I need to get up there. That almost looks like you gotta drop off the ledge and then climb around to that, which you can then make that jump. So, okay. I'm trying to discern, like, what to do in my head. I know you gotta work your way up there. Eventually. But I don't know what the point of this box is. It feels like there's nothing to really... Unless that is actually a ledge. Nah. <laughs> that's not a ledge. They didn't pull a real cheeky there. Um... Feels like you might be able to like jump in a hit. Nah, that's not that's not a place to grab into. Um, I do remember having trouble on this level. This level is definitely like there's a fair bit to digest. Okay, so maybe if there's a hole that went down there, I don't think it goes right that much. Flat. Definitely hear noises. That's nothing, and then I came in from there. And I need a key for the front, which I can't recall if that key is at the end of the level or the beginning. We've got this area down here with the propeller, which I promptly ignored. But I think the propeller is in the way. <laughs> like, it doesn't look like it's in the way, but no, it is, it is certainly in the way. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I guess, uh, I, one thing, uh, yeah, I don't think Australia is really, like, that weird of a region for games. Like, we've got all the, you know, the similar stores, we get, we used to get most of the titles, now it's basically, you get all of them. Um. So here's a timeline of consoles for the post-Soviet Union, 1991 to 2000 NES Dendi, 93 to 2000 Mega Drive, 2001 to 2007 PS1, 2007 to 2013 Xbox 360, 2013. So it seems that the, um, the 360 kind of kicked in at just the right time. Like that seems like pretty much when, yeah, when the 360 was new. Oh, I could just want to get up onto that ledge, but... Hmm. It almost looks like I could pull out that box. Or push this box. Uh, <laughs> lovely changing color. I don't think Lara's strong enough to pull a box when it's got two things on it, but... I think he's just like on top there. I think that's all where this guy is. Because uh, they they bought it because you you could ah you can make pirates yeah so you buy the console and then and, uh, that makes sense. Um, I do wonder like because the PS One has a level of copy protection, though. so I guess someone just makes a burner and goes goes for that or something like that. Yeah, I can push that one box. Uh, into an immovable spot now. Hmm. Like, I just need this to be, like, one over. Maybe that was my problem. Maybe that was, Maybe I just softlocked my, my game. They shouldn't... Yeah, that's kind of weird if they if they let you do that. Okay, let's load load the save. Let's just go from there. Oh, cool, cool. I'm right back at the beginning. And there's a key there. There's a key. There's a key at the start. There's a key at the start of the level. Are you even able to grab that key, or do you have to like come back later? Because I'm thinking like probably gonna fall on the rocks. I don't think you can swim back up. Oh no, you can definitely be on this ledge. Well, 
Good thing I restarted the entire level because I saw a key. Wow. Uh, the PS2 more popular than 360 because it has uh, so much litter. Pirates bought five PS2. Crazy how popular the PS2 is though, I'll tell you that. Like even, even uh, before piracy. Well, yeah, this this key would have made a lot more sense had I seen it on the way down. That's a real uh -huh. cheeky key, isn't it? It's just there. The worst part is I, I kept looking around, I kept wandering around. Didn't think that there'd be a key right there at the start. Oh. We're gonna we're gonna spot a level designer in the credits, and I'm gonna go. Ah, yes, it's all you. Got him. Easy. Uh. There we go. So okay. So this is the level fresh. There's nothing going on. Well then I haven't taken out dudes. But now I've got a key, which means I can put the key into this hole? Is that where the key goes? Stern key. No. Well that's not the stern, so... Good news! It wasn't the stern key. I appreciate the flamethrower guy thinks he can reach me from over there. He can't. So yeah, I think... I think the goal should be to push the this box closer now let me push the the top box over by one that's gonna be my running theory at least <laughs> well, i just i just realized i thought i suffocated myself i'm like no you can pull the box back i don't know why i thought you couldn't So, uh, so my one topic for the week is, uh, is another internet discussion that's probably amplified by a bunch of people who, uh, don't represent at all an opinion, but, or, or, or um, you know, a, a, a large opinion, but I thought it was an interesting talk, uh, we put Clone Wars for your grandma to watch after six Star Wars films. Oh, like the, the, the... Yeah, they did a film, an animated film for the Clone Wars, didn't they? I don't know my Clone Wars history, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so I can't jump to that ledge, but I can push this... This top box. It's still like a janky jump. And I can't push it further, it's not gonna go any further. I push it over in that direction, do I get an angle? You, you putted it for her. Nice. Uh, I'm thinking if I could somehow. Is it. Could it be possible? I'm thinking like, well, if I had both boxes on that corner, then that would be a great jump to the, the high left, right? But I'm thinking, well, I can't push the box unless there's nothing on it. Sorry, I can only push the box when there's only one box on it. So I can pull that all the way to the edge and then pull that one over, but I can't do anything about that top box. And then, yeah. So I'm thinking like, yeah, like, I can only move the top box to the middle here, and then I can't push it any further down there? I mean, this is this is where the puzzle is right now. I don't think there's anything else I can really investigate unless I just completely missed a keyhole down below. So, this is going to be a real jank jump, if that is a jump. I don't, it, it doesn't look right, but we'll give it a try. Nice. Uh, oh boy. 
so so yeah so the 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 topic that i saw was um uh i appreciate donkey's videos but some oh i that looks kind of jank um uh but yeah donkey made a video on xenoblade chronicles 3 i have not watched the video because i want to play xenoblade chronicles 3 and i was thinking well there's probably a spoiler somewhere in the video knowing donkey and uh apparently people were very upset because he briefly tweeted something that spoils the ending of the game and i kind of go yeah like that's kind of that's that's a bit annoying, and especially the unspoken rule when it comes to like let's playing or other kinds of stuff. Uh, it's called three month rule, and that is you don't talk about anything deep into a game uh, until it's been out for three months. Um, I guess you know it, if it's like oh, Elden Ring just came out, people are beating the game, and then it's like well, you want to talk about beating the game. It's like you can talk about that to. Oh. It's, this totally feels like a sequence break, though. I don't think it's a legit way of going about it. But then, yeah, like... And I can push this box one over. Or pull it back. Uh, but... <laughs> battle starts on screen, grandma dick. <laughs> Listen, if I don't know what your grandma's in for, I don't know... I don't know if she knows what she's doing either. Yeah, I can push this box there, but that is certainly too far away. It's high enough. But I don't believe this will get me there. Like, well, especially not like that. Okay, let's just keep exploring a bit more. I'm gonna explore this this cabin down here, because that seems kind of weird to get stuck immediately at the beginning of a level like that. So what was down here? We had the pipe, and then this goes pretty much toward the ship. There's a ladder, there's a barrier on the way up to the ladder. Um, now, the reason why Donkey is in a bit more of a uh, hot water is uh, people generally... Uh, not... People is a weasel word. There, there are a number of people who are upset that Donkey doesn't like JRPGs in general. Therefore, when he plays a JRPG and he just says he doesn't like it, a lot of people are upset because he doesn't really convey why, and so it just kind of feels like he's smearing uh, JRPGs. Uh, as someone who hasn't seen this video, I can't attest to anything in it. But... I watched Donkey's video on Project Octopath Traveler, um, which was like four or so years ago. Octopath Traveler being a very by the books JRPG, I felt. I didn't play too much. Xenoblade came out 13 years, 11 years ago. That was interesting. The first Xenoblade was definitely like fairly neat. I don't think it was really groundbreaking. I think it got some crazy praise because it was interestingly not getting a US localization, but it did get a UK localization. I thought that was kind of weird. So it, 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 uh, um, it was definitely one, and I had picked it up, uh, fairly early because, uh, it seemed like it was going pretty rare and, uh, yeah, it definitely disappeared, but it was definitely a solid game and, and one that, you know, I'm glad people did pick up and, and like. There were two other games as part of that localization push. Uh, one called The Last Story, which I thought was kind of eh. And one called Pandora's Tower, which I might enjoy more if, as an adult. Uh, but as a younger child or a, or a teenager, rather. Uh, it's not groundbreaking because of the new ideas, but because it was a classic JRPG with Western RPG quality life stuff, like saving whenever you want. Saving whenever you want. Uh, a lot of handful of like those MMO kind of things as well. Um, but just like additional information on screen and also having party members that feel like you could easily use any combination of them you could lean into the strategies that you really wanted i i like that one whereas there's other rpgs that just feel like you know you don't really have much agency over what's going on uh <laughs> we're pulling out the tomb raiders.net i'm sorry everyone <laughs> again i'm i'm wandering around doing nothing useful okay level da 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 Next level. 
Da da da. That's all. Okay. Main deck. Kevin. Move all crates and then just push the crate on the left against the others. Climb on top of it, push the upper crate on top of the rightmost crate. Pull the left crate out again, then climb over it and push it once. Turn around, pull the other crate away from the stack crates to reveal the reveal. Reveal. <laughs> There's just a door. There's. <sighs> why does? Why am I an idiot? I I feel I feel so dumb every single time I read it. And I go, oh my gosh, like really? So, so, okay. Uh, so, Donkey's Octopath Traveler vid video, I do have like criticisms with. Uh, it, he never labeled it as, uh, as he calls a dunk view, which is his review structure, and usually he gives like a very broad, like out of five score at the end. Um, but, uh, with, uh, with the Octopath Traveler one, it's like he, he basically ripped into the game for features that feel like that's what the game is about, and people buy the game on those features. Um, there's some things you can riff on, like, okay, well, the translation can be stilted at times, maybe, sure, okay. Uh, but then there's other things where it's like, you know, or... Uh, how do I how do I phrase it? I can't believe I can't believe I missed it. At least the key goes in here. At least, at least it goes in there. There we go. Okay, finally some new gameplay. Uh, well, let's let's do a save. Um, so one one thing I experienced was like he talked about how the first character was uh had this very simple and boring story and you can find the the bor the the story of this character boring or simple sure but i think the key thing he said was the first character i think he mentioned the second character later on um that's that's a thing i got to pull out why is there water in here i just Is there any, anything cheeky over here? Nope. I'm missing something, am I? Maybe there's a switch or something? Oh my gosh. This is this is the worst kind of Tomb Raider gameplay when you're just completely lost. That's a box I've got to push. But this is all underwater. Oh, there it is. There's the switch. There's the switch. Hide in there. Um... Yeah, and, and so he described, like, this first character as that, and he was just like, ah, oh, like, you know, and the, uh, it's just not, not interesting. But I thought one, one thing that was kind of weird was he didn't describe many of the characters. He only described these two in particular, and specifically described as, like, the first character, the second character. And after playing the game for, like, five hours, I didn't get too far into it, but I noticed... The whole point of the game is that there are eight main characters uh, kind of in a circle around the world. And and you follow each character as they wander into the next town. And effectively they gather their big parading posse to then take on the big bad villain who seems to underline all of their stories. Um, it's like Dragon Quest IV, if anyone's played that one, where uh, you start off the game... Um, playing four different chapters as four different sets of characters, each with their own problems. But then inevitably, they just wanted me to pull a lever and then just wander back, did they? It just uses time. Come on, game. Um, uh, but yeah, like ultimately, each of these characters, their story isn't going to be answered just in that first like uh -huh. part it, the whole point is that they're introduced they have some you know motivation they have some drive and then they're you know eventually all these characters unite under that common goal <coughs> oh it's a bit of a drop this time uh which so that kind of indicates that donkey's talking about the game without getting too far into it 
Now that's okay, I guess, although I'd say if I could find that out after five hours of gameplay, I'm worried about how much gameplay Donkey based his video on. Uh, but then, also then he started criticizing uh, random encounters and turn-based battles. And so he said random encounters were annoying because... Uh, what, did, what did he say? I'm going to be straw manning if I said... Uh, said anything. I don't, I don't have a specific quote. I've forgotten. I, I I don't even think he brings it up. I think he just says, like, it just pads out the playtime or something like that. And then the turn-based battles make him so slow and so sluggish. And he's like, here's a Goomba in Super Mario Brothers. Boom. Jumped on it. Here's a, a level one snail in Octopath Traveler. And he's got one party character. And also the snail isn't even level one. And he... You know, it takes a few turns to attack it. It's like, it's a non-trivial encounter, which I'm pretty sure the game has a feature to avoid trivial encounters as well. I'm very certain it had something. Put me off if I'm wrong, but... So it just kind of felt like, you know, it was it was not a very, um, I guess, well-spirited discussion or, or a video. And I understand that, like, oh, you know, he's, he can make a video on whatever he wants, I guess, sure, but... Ultimately, you know, I like watching the insightful videos that have some humor, and this was... not really insightful, because I'm like, I... You, you get a very different impression of the game from the video. Why can he even climb up this ledge? Okay. There's a boat all the way out here. Uh, and I'm getting harpooned. This harpoon is actually going to bother me, so... How about let's get him? I have an M16. I, let's not use the M16 right now, but let's... Let's get him. There's two of them. Bonk. Bonk. It's not the most satisfying weapon in the world, is it? You gotta reload all the time as well. There you go. Good stuff. Right there. Uh, so this got me thinking. What if... Uh, reviewers... I'm gonna say reviewers in general. Uh, couldn't play or couldn't review games of genres that they just didn't like. I feel like that's definitely the extreme point. Uh, I don't think you can climb up here. I think you've got to get the boat somewhere to be able to get onto it, especially when the camera just spazzes out like that. Um, oh, is there just a little secret down here? Oh, sick. Uh, the polar opposite is that every reviewer, or rather every game, has an opinion from every person, pretty much. I feel like that's that should be the opposite. Now, the reason why websites like IGN and, and GameSpot and all that stuff that, uh, what's another obsolete one? What's another one that no one no one reads from anymore? We'll say Kotaku. There you go. Um, the reason why these sites uh, only put one reviewer on the game is because one, they've mostly only got one copy, and two, because it's not very efficient for multiple reviewers to try and say the same things about games. And maybe different reviewers will give different things, uh, different statements about a game, but, you know, ultimately, you're gonna have one guy's opinion, and if a good reviewer can account for everything about a game and give it an honest take, you know, usually they just stick with one reviewer for a day. Uh, but, I do, I do remember there were, like, uh, magazines back in the day, I think Famitsu is, like, one where they get four different reviewers, so if one person, like, of their team has a problem, it doesn't always drag the score down if they, if they do give scores. Um, this is going to be a bit of a weird jump, isn't it? I'm going to turn right. There we go. This is a very weird bit of platforming. It's like, yeah, it's right on the cliffside here. go back up and hop there we go 
all of that just to jump over these rocks here and into a different pit of water. Is there actually anything in the water or no? Oh, you could swim under here anyways. Are you kidding me? You could have just sw <laughs> swam in anyways. I did all this fun parkour. I did not have the need to do it. Cool. Climbing up a lot. This is a very Tomb Raider 1-esque level, isn't it? Apart from the guys trying to kill you at the top. Um, but yeah, I, I thought, well, yeah. Like, so when someone does review a game, who do they put on it? Uh -huh. Do they put someone who is very knowledgeable about the genre and in turn might be more likely to give it a positive score? Or do they put complete randos on that? Not complete randos, but like, do they put people who are a bit more unfamiliar to give it a, you know, a fresh take. And I think the general answer is, I think they should give the potential buyer, or at least the person who understands the potential buyer the most, um, to, to review it. Um, I think those are probably the most valuable kinds of reviews. Um, and, and in particular, the reviewers whose opinions may line up with yours are personally valuable, but not generally valuable. I think ultimately, more reviews are better than fewer reviews. But, you do run... Uh, oh, I'm up on the ship. I'm up on the ship now. All of that effort, just to get onto the ship. I'm immediately going to get, like, flamethrowered by someone, aren't I? Oh, well, that's not a flamethrower. For sure. Um, uh, one of my, one of my favorite reviewers on YouTube is uh, G Man Lives. Love him. Uh -huh. You know, gotta gotta praise your Australians. But I always think I'm a bit of a hipster because I remember following him when he uh, made his uh, not when he made his Shadow Warrior video, but like that was about like within a year old when I first like started watching him, and that was when um, I think before the that was right as the reboot came out. Um, his mic was a lot different back then. And his review style was a lot different back then. I'm amazed he's, he's been consistently, like, making solid videos as well, because... I don't know, you'd think he'd run out of games, but nah. He just keeps going. He keeps making great videos, so... Um, but I really like his review style because he... Um, like, he seems to explain the potential markets for, for games quite well. So he's just like, if you like this kind of stuff, you'll like this. If you if you hate this kind of genre, you might find this to be not up your alley, like that kind of stuff. And and he's really good at giving like a great deep dive while respecting that, you know, there are going to be people who like it, uh, who like those kinds of games. And especially if they like other kinds of games uh, of which he shares similar opinions to. Um, He'll still say, like, things that are definitely his opinion. But you don't feel like he's misrepresenting anything. Like, even his older stuff where, he, you know, even he feels like he hasn't explained it well. Um, it's still just like, yeah, I mean, it's there. I think it's just, you know, spending more time on explaining a mechanic can highlight even more information about it. Like, uh, some of his really old stuff... Uh, you know, it's like five minutes, and a video review in five minutes is like, you gotta really hit the dot points, but there's a lot of, like, newer games where it's just tricky to describe it all in five minutes. Okay, I'm trying to figure out what you do. What do you do up here, now that I'm on the, on the deck? These slopes make me want to try and do, like, a, a slide jump, but a little bit off. See what I mean? They're, they're not quite there. Uh, there's bits off the side, I know that. And I want to say... Ah, yeah, yeah, we've got this, like, lower deck. Hi there. Hi there, how you doing? So this, this deck area is not... It's still part of the ship, but it's kind of confusing that you got to, like, slide down into it. 
is bound to be underneath. Okay. Okay, let's see how it is. I think this box will prove to be useful because I could use it to climb back up. Um, so yeah. Uh, on on donkey specific video, I think there is merit in uh, the perspective of a non-RPG player uh, trying to understand uh -huh. an RPG and then going, oh, like, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this. And it, the RPGs aren't for everyone. I understand that. But... I guess there's also a degree of, like, should you, this, this one's a toughie, because I do feel like every video should be made, but it's like, there's a lot of people who do uh -huh. take donkey videos too seriously. I, I remember way back when I used to think when the nostalgia critic said stuff was bad, therefore it must be bad. And then it's like, sometimes you just, that guy just popped in from nowhere. That guy just popped in from nowhere. I saw it. I, you were not there a moment ago, man. You were not there a moment ago. Let's get that more while we're at it. I don't want him. Uh. So I don't want to. I don't want to say like you can't say things because there's a responsibility that someone will take it out of context. But I think it's more that like you know, if you're if you're a fan of of donkeys or whatever. I mean, I enjoy donkeys videos, so I'm a fan as well. But it's just like. Sounds like anything any YouTuber really says is like pure gospel. There's a, there's always truths and and uh, kind of you know exaggerations that everyone always has in their reviews, and that's fine. But ultimately, you're not going to know if you truly like or dislike Xenoblade unless you play it yourself. And you could say, oh well, I just don't want to play it, and then yeah, that's fine. Like. But you can't say you like it or dislike it, you just say it, you don't have any interest in playing it. That kind of person, I don't know, I, I've not seen that person. I think most of the conversation I've seen has floated around the whole... Should a reviewer have to like the genre before they play the game? Or, or sorry, before they review the game. And... I do think that the, there's a degree of... Um, the reviewer should try their best to explain it. And, and, and in the same way, if you if you really love JRPGs, and then it's like, oh, here's a JRPG, and I'm reviewing a JRPG, it's like, try and also understand the other perspective of the, the, uh, the person who doesn't, you know, particularly play JRPGs. How would they feel when, if they play it? I, and, and then I got to thinking, yeah, like, a good reviewer can explain their opinion in, in words really well. A great reviewer explains other people's opinions and words really well. And I think that's kind of the point, is, like, the best reviewers are the ones that can explain, you know, like, just because you're not like them doesn't mean that they can't, you know, describe something in the detail that makes sense to you. I think that's kind of the big thing. I'm not, I can't really say much more than that. Um, kind of reiterating the same words over and over again. But you know what I mean. Um, I really enjoyed, uh, uh, I forgot who it was specifically. I, I keep attributing it to, like, Greg Kasavin, um, uh, when he was at GameSpot. Uh, that one review of Metroid Prime was just like, you know, that sold me on the game because I never really played first-person shooters, and then I see this first-person shooter, and, and bonus points, like, I was then thinking, oh, is Metroid a first-person shooter? That is cheeky. That is really cheeky. Now this would hurt. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, like doing a wide jump onto just this, like, metal roof. Unless you mean the glassy cave. Like, I look at this and I go, like... Like, you could probably do the, the, this is the walking, like, climb up. Which I think is indeed walking, so that's fine. Now I'm like, how do you get down? Uh huh. Hey. 
I guess like that. Sure. There we go. Uh, it's kind of crazy as well. Like, there's like, yeah, there's like four levels to the ship. Uh huh. Also, did I get uh, another weapon just then? Ah, I got the grenade launcher back. Sick. Nice. Uh, roof, old tree floor. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did they hide another box for me to slide out so I could jump back up? No, they didn't, because it's the start of the level. I think that music was supposed to play when I started the level. Love how they reused the window texture from Venice for this level. Oh yeah, they did! This is the same textures, but they're blue. Because they've aged. Yeah. Uh -huh. well, that's a that's a good spot. That's a good spot, yeah. Yeah, I I think there's just no ledge to climb back up. Just like I'm gonna slide down from there. So I decided to go for a secret. Cool. So I guess what's the plan? You gotta swim down, swim around, and swim back up. Oh my gosh. They put a box on every other ledge, but this one, and <laughs> you gotta do jumps anyways, man. I love how I, I don't know if I preface by uh, playing Tomb Raider 2 by saying I enjoy Tomb Raider 2 more than Tomb Raider 1. It's definitely a, a bigger and wilder game, but also, man, yeah, you've got you've got these levels that are just like they are so much trickier to digest. Is this level legit? There's so much going on. So back down to the bottom. Swim back up. Jumping all around. So yeah, how long have I been in this level? Half an hour already, cool. And that's half an hour before saves. Legends say if you look too much at this 90s rock texture, uh, wall, uh, wall texture will look at you from every 90s 3D game. I'm always impressed at like how low resolution textures were at the time. But, because it's like, I'm playing the game at 1024 by 768. This is one of the, like, regularly supported resolutions. It's definitely very high for the time. But it's still just like, there's no graphic settings in this game. This was back in the day when there'd be one, you know, one mode to rule it all. You, you can turn off bilinear filtering and that's it. But the textures are still the textures. They can't get any, uh, you know any sharper like that. So I'm amazed that like, you know, that's what they, that's what they went with. The, the no, the no sharper and what they are. They look fine from a distance to be honest though. Like, yeah, you can, you can tell the, the level design jaggedness. Um, but in general, it, it does the job. I can't believe I did all those jumps just to realize you can just swim underneath. And there's a moray in there. Out of here, moray. So I guess one thing I've noted, I never went up where the, the guy was hiding. This looks like it would probably just flip back onto the room I was in, but perhaps there's some merits of being up here. Well, there's a, there's a med kit. Uh -huh. You can't have too many of these, but like, does that just drop? Oh, that drops down onto the boat. Oh. Okay, well that's that's good though. We came came back here. Uh, so I assume you're just gonna take a lot of damage. That's why they that's why they give you the med kit. <laughs> Cause it's like I kind of want to be on full health with this. That's not gonna put me on full health. The, the small med kit, but hopefully. Hmm. Hmm. This is a. <laughs> I know Half-Life 1 did the same thing as well, it's like you fell from a high ledge and there's one specific point where you take 
you just gotta take fall damage and you can uh -huh. fall from a, a pipe that falls onto a table. But they put medkits on the table, so you're gonna heal the moment you hit the table. Uh -huh. There is a real shark in the water. That is a real great white shark right there. And it is now dead because Lara is an absolute crack shot. Well, as long as I didn't put two sharks in the water, you know? And there's another shark. And I'm I'm gone. I'm out of here. I didn't even save as well, did I? Nope. Yell at me for not saving every single time. There I go. Use that med kit. Pick up the key. Pick up the harpoons and kill a shark and then cry because there's a second shark uh -huh. probably. For experiment, I tried to make a full Nintendo 64 ROM collection without Japanese releases. At the end, it followed away at only 2.7 gigabytes with 285 games. Meanwhile, for example, Sega City already uploaded uh, any device in RAW, and this is only the iOS version of uh, Fall of the Collection. Otherwise, with Q42 gigabytes and a half. Um, I actually, I. I maintain my own like ROM collection, and I can attest that, uh, yeah, Sega CD is fairly large. Um, the Saturn is surprisingly not much larger, because the Saturn doesn't have a, a really large library. Um, but uh, it comes out of nowhere. I tell you. Yeah, the Saturn's library isn't too large. Um, the PlayStation One is massive if you're gonna if you're gonna have that because uh, I'm pretty sure the redump set is like ten thousand ROMs or ten thousand discs. It's a lot of stuff. Um, and uh, another large one is the DS, because yeah, it's it's a product of how large are the cartridge or the the game sizes, and then how large are the uh, well, how many releases did they have? The Nintendo sixty four gets to be quite convenient because there's really not many releases um which is always surprising a lot of people will note like a lot of great nintendo 64 games and then it's like there were only like a couple hundred nintendo 64 games it sounds like a lot but then it's like you know the playstation one had like 3000 or something never mind multi-platform multi-region releases of them and it's just like oh my gosh there's so many so many games on the ps1 um I don't think most other handhelds are really that bad as well. Um, PSP is kind of bulky. I don't. It, I don't think it's as bad as um, the DS. Uh, when I saw uh, the weight of a full torrent, one hundred fifty-one gig, I was shocked, and I'm not even joking. I said to myself, "No way. No wonder '90s Russian kids never saw this add-on, even for CD, is really heavy." Um, yeah, definitely. There's actually. Um, if you've ever checked out um, uh, how the Xbox games are dumped by Redump, uh, they actually don't work on emulators because they've dumped the, the DVD like section of the disc as well. Because the whole point is that you can put the disc into a DVD player and sometimes it'll play music and sometimes it'll have a bit just to say like this isn't supposed to work on DVDs, you can't play it. And that comes from the disc itself for some reason, I don't know why. Um, Oh, wait, why am I jumping down? There's a... There should be a way to... Uh... I think there was a spot for a key up there, so I'll try that out. Um... And so, in, in turn, CD games in the 90s be like Big Chungus. Oh, definitely, like... I mean, that's the whole reason why they were, you know, there was pretty much to facilitate things that couldn't fit on cartridges nicely. You could still do, like, really nice audio. You couldn't really stream it in on the Nintendo 64 unless you basically dedicated it. Um, but you could technically do really nice audio if you really wanted to. Um, actually, I want to see if someone's done a... Um, uh, I'm actually curious if this key... No, cabin key. This would be somewhere up here. Um, I'm really curious if someone's done like one of those... Uh, like... Um, What's the phrase? Like the kind of like tech demo ROMs uh, for the Nintendo 64 and they just stream in like legitimate music. Uh, not legitimate, but like 
real like waveform music and not just like MIDI samples and do it like really well while also doing other kind of really impressive stuff. People probably have done that. Um, Because I feel like the Nintendo 64 like has the capabilities. Um, it's kind of weird as well because like Nintendo like really went like full on on the sound um, hardware of the SNES and then the Nintendo 64 sound hardware is like fine. It's not amazing but it's fine. It does the job-ish. Um, I recently did a, a replay through of um, uh, Ocarina of Time and I don't have any like huge intention to play it again for the um, for the stream channel because I feel like I did a actually a really good let's play of it um, decently later into my channel's life. I remember I paired it with Twilight Princess. I thought that was uh, kind of fun, and then uh, I never really <laughs> never really did the or I did the pair game for was it Doom Three and Hexen did that. Um, Yeah, this is going to be a painful jump. Yeet. Oh, don't even need to grab the ledge. Okay. So what I'm curious about is... I guess this is what... Yeah, what being over here is all about. So you're on this ledge. And then you jump off. And... I... Wait... Oh, it's over there. Yeah, okay. This is gonna be kind of weird. We'll see how this goes. So you jump down there. there you go. It's pretty funny when you stop for a moment. Think about when CDs only uh, have appeared. People had no idea what, uh, what to do with so much space and only 20 or 30 years later even, this is not enough and sometimes you need to download the other half of the game from the console. Oh, exactly. Yeah, there's a, there's a degree of um, like uh, most games at the time when they... Um, started using CDs, they exclusively used it for either encoding video, which would then kind of slowly stream off the off the device, like Sega CD games are, um, you know, notorious for not having great video quality, and that's just because they couldn't read really much data, like, fast enough, so it ended up being you know, very pixely, very, uh, very noisy. Um, or they'd use it for music, and because music has a fixed standard, um, you know, data stream rate, um, by the Redbook standard, or maybe if you want to use it via your own standard, sure, but there's a, there's a specific, like, oh, way to do it. It's not, it's not that difficult. So they just ended up mostly using it for, for music. Um, and then, uh, yeah, when the PS2 came along, sorry, PS1, I'll say, um, definitely had more, uh, adventurous uses. At some point, not even space was a problem. RAM became, and still is the problem. I'd say, I'd say right now, memory speed is definitely a big issue. Um, there's a handful of games, like a, I think newer Total War games, that do struggle um, just because it wants to perform large like calculations and transfers, and it's often just bottlenecked by memory. It's quite interesting in that one. Um, Video memory as well, like, uh, with the, with the GPU is, uh, surprisingly, uh, dense as well. Uh, that's why graphics cards with faster memory often do better in the grand scheme of things. Like, uh, my 1080 Ti is, uh, doing absolutely wonders on new games. It's purely just because it's got, you know, crazy speeds on that memory. Uh... But yeah, I, I think kind of like by later PS1 games, um, a lot of games have kind of really figured out how to utilize the most out of uh, how to make CDs work. And they did cheeky things like uh, very specific stuff like having uh, content at multiple places on the disc or having stuff at uh, near the inner part of the disc to read it faster. Would they put it at the inner part or the outer part? I think they put it at the inner part. Um, uh huh. Like, there's a lot of neat little tricks that you can use on the disc. Cyberpunk on a slim PS4 would be like, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Cyberpunk on the PS4 is, uh, an absolute gem, we'll say that. <laughs> but 
But then, uh, yeah, I guess, yeah, the PS2 and all that stuff came along, and, uh, discs <laughs> gradually became, like, fine. I just even remember getting the CD version of the gaming magazine. Uh, just get because I did not have a DVD drive. I remember when, um, uh, I did a, a little bit of a deep dive on the, uh, PlayStation magazine. Um, I think April it must have been. Where is that door open? Is that, like, the top? There's another guy up there. Hi there. How you doing? Uh, this is in the mid-2000s. Yeah, I, I don't think I had a DVD drive until like 2011. Uh -huh. I think I had like a, a, a CD drive on my computer and then my sister got like The Sims 3 and I couldn't play it until I realized that like, oh, you could use a... Uh, at the time it was EA Download Manager. What was that? Was that a door on the other side? It definitely looked like it was on one of the higher ledges. Where was that door? Oh, it was this one, probably. Why are they hiding uh -huh. ammo over here? I'm terrified. Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness that cabin key finally came to use. I think in the mid 2000s, at least every cool kid had a PS1 at least. Uh, here in Australia, I'd definitely say like so many of my mates had PS1s. I did not know that many people who had Nintendo 64s. Uh, that's... this... that is a cheeky... that is a cheeky room. You run in, press the button. Uh, there's gonna be a guy who's come to beat my face in a moment. There he is. Uh, oh, no better, but there was one. Yeah, it's fine. And honestly, I mean, there's, there's a lot of really neat, like, homebrew um, Mega Drive games as well. Like, I'd say the Mega Drive's a great console. Um, just because it's cheaper and older doesn't necessarily make it, uh, you know, no fun at the time. That's certainly how it goes. There you go, up a ledge. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say I'm close to getting that key that will grant me freedom from this level. It was a bit understanding at the beginning, but now it's like, now I think I get it. And this jump's a bit too high. Ooh. That's because you gotta jump backwards. Preferably, <laughs> preferably a better jump. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably say around the PS2 eras, that's that's when uh, discs started coming for, for granted. Like, it's just, there is so much space on a PS2 disc. Like, uh, especially when you dual layer it and all that stuff, it's just, you can fit whatever on one disc. Um, Xbox, same deal. GameCube, uh, hilariously, there are multi-disc GameCube games. They ran into that limit uh, kind of near the end of the lifespan. Not too early in, but toddler gaming, my first multiplayer game, were web, almost free Minecraft. Uh -huh. oh, nice. So is that, is this key, is this, this the one, the storage key, is that the storage? Down the, f <laughs> down the far end? I don't really see any other... Any other doors? Like, I don't really think there was any others on the way down. I think everyone's got some great, like, childhood gaming uh, games. Let's get three secrets, why not? There we go. I didn't even realize that opened up when uh, you go near it. That's cool. Uh, I gotta go the long way again to get down to the bottom. Sick. But I think that would be it. I think we're basically done for the, the level. I know, right? It's been 
I actually think it's been... I think the first level I had like 40 minutes clocked, and now it's like an hour 40 into the stream. Oh boy. Oh boy. I am so out of breath, I'll tell you that. This, this level has definitely drained me, but... You know what? Like, at least it'll be a nice change of scenery after, after this. No more swimming. I, I mentioned earlier, I played Ocarina of Time. I'm done with water temples. I swear, that water temple in Ocarina of Time, like, got to me again. And it's fairly simple to understand again. It's not actually too bad. But it's just like, trying to relearn it again is definitely a, a bit of a trek. Um, also, I, uh, I played the, the, the retro achievement set, so uh, they had a handful of achievements that were based on doing a three-heart run. And uh, yeah, this was the first time I ever did a three-heart run in any Zelda game. Uh, but yeah, now specifically your career of time, I can safely say I've got the proof. That, uh, yep, three-heart run the game. It's actually not too bad. I'm going to assume that since it spawned some guys, this is the key. This is the key. We can finally leave this room of the level. It might, <laughs> there might be more level beyond here, but at the very least, Oh, would you look at that? Would you look at that? It's just, it's just right here. That's cool. Uh -huh. Oh, wipe your brow. We did it. So, Lara swims back up after picking up the shape. Ah, there's still more game, of course, but, uh... Uh, yes, no more naked feet. She, she gets onto this biplane. And of course, you know, all of her clothes are in this biplane. This game at a shop, uh, everything in cost at in-game currency, which they give you every day. And of course, you've got a big streak of logging in. That is a very loud plane. There you go, flying it away. I love how, like, she's probably next to the... the, uh... the ship that had, uh, kidnapped her earlier. Also, yeah, she just got changed into an outfit just to change into a different outfit. And, uh, also didn't even check her fuel. And... has no idea how to land ahead of time. Jeez, Lara. Remember the scene from Jurassic Park to, or Jurassic World uh Park Dominion? What was the new one called? I don't even know, man. My sister wanted to see it, so I saw Jurassic World, whatever. I had glasses. Actually, I think Lara always has her glasses on her. But she's not wearing them now. <laughs> so a new outfit. Obviously, you know. The most practical gear for Lara. She's got a lovely warm woolen jacket and the shortest shorts you've ever seen. <laughs> it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And the first thing she does is shoot an eagle. She lost it not to show us 90s RTX gaming. <laughs> show the, the snowballs like ah, yes. Okay, well, I'm not. Okay, well, nope. She is now a pancake. Uh, okay, so they show the snowballs. You're supposed to just beat the snowballs, I guess. Or just jump between them, that works too. I thought you were supposed to duck it to. Oh, wait! <laughs> They baited me. They baited me. I wasn't expecting a second lot of snowballs. Ah. Remember potato counter? Every day I would count potatoes to get my Neo points. I was not very good at potato counter. I'll tell you that. Okay, so I'm going to hide. And there's going to be more snowballs, okay? There you go. See? I'm a genius. Are they going to unleash a third set of snowballs? I don't think so. 
I don't think so. I think we're good. There we go. So this level, I believe this is, yeah, this is a real, like, interesting level. Uh, that's a fun, fun wall. I believe you climb down this, don't you? Or you, or you just do the drop. That is a bit of a drop. It's a bit of a drop. I don't trust the drop. Uh, but I know this level's got a, a fun gimmick with it. That is a bit of a drop. Why why do they present the drop? I don't know, man. The last year when we bought a potato for winter, I found Among Us potato. You found Among Us potato? It's pattern seeking brain, you know? Everything with an A shape is just among us now. Kind of is. And that's okay. I was thinking, is that. Is that. Nah, no, nah, no, these are all rocks. These are all rock faces. Am I doing this again? I started the level. I'm looking at it and I'm going, yeah, nah. Don't see, don't see, have a photo of this. Oh, nice. That's not anything. Or you could just jump at it. <laughs> don't, don't want to know what's all the way down there. It's probably a secret all the way down there, like one of the little secret totems, but. I don't want to find out. Uh, I was not expecting that. I, I just want to, like, lean right. Or maybe I'll just go climb over. Uh, if only I could uh, use eBay at this point, I would have sold it for one million dollars. It's like the, uh, the, the Jesus chisel, you know? It's like... I can't believe I just did that. I can't believe I just did that. I'm like... <sighs> I just... That one irked me now. Okay, the good news, there's nothing down there. <laughs> I'm glad I checked. <laughs> it is at this point in the night that I start just playing horrendously. Absolutely. There we go. Don't even need to slide on the wall. Okay. So you got one more ledge, and then you're fine. Hey Lara, you wanna shoot the bird? There you go. Oh! There's two birds! Uh, yes, but I did a much better thing. I ate Among Us. I have Among Us in my blood. You are <laughs> Among Gas? You are Among Gas. So... I think this is just a... Get to the other side of the canyon kind of bit, and I dropped onto the one bit of land right there instead of into the water like I wanted to. Someone dropped a med kit on the cliff, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's figure out how to climb up. This is certainly a ledge. Um, that actually, that does climb up. <laughs> so now I can rule the earth with the whole Among Us cult. You could, you could. Uh, I feel like climbing up here is purely to 
get a bit of a way to climb up to the top. I don't really know if there's, like, that, that kind of looks like the most likely ledge to climb up. But then, like, what do you do to get over there? Well, let's just jump back down again. Let's check out the other side of the river. Is it a river? It's more like a crevasse, isn't it? Doesn't really look like anything. I don't see any ledges. Definitely not here. Um. Mm, no. no. Nothing screams out at me. Maybe this diagonal ledge means something. I'm worried that I'm gonna slide from this ledge. Oh, okay. From here, uh, do I try and jump over to the other side, or is that too slight? That's too slidey. The Earth would be the best takeover of, uh, that would be the best takeover of the Earth. Not from Alliance or Super Villains, no, from a meme about 2018 game with a guy who ate the potato that looked like the meme. I mean, the... The nice thing with world takeovers from Among Us is, uh, I don't know, they never see it coming. Okay, so that would slide me over. All of that would slide me over. I don't think there's anything, like, it doesn't look like there's really anything to grab over on that side. This side, at least, it looks like there's a couple of ledges around. But, it got this big boy in the middle here. So unless I could climb up to the very top again. Did I save at the bottom or save at the top? I think I saved at the top still. So. Yeah. That doesn't really look encouraging either. Uh, especially when I... Yeah, like I could jump up here. But now it's like, now I'm in an awkwardly high position. Like, I don't really know if that, that doesn't seem like the way to do it, but I'll do it anyways, because then it puts me on this ledge. It kind of looks like this was the way to go anyways, so we'll go for it. We'll keep, we'll keep going. We'll continue on. And there's water down here. This is, uh... <sighs> uh... Wait, I became the meme version of Kirby. The meme version of Kirby where he just eats. He never stops. Yeah, I... I'm trying to think in my head, how would you jump up to here? Because you'd be down there, that's really low. Probably something on the cellar walkthrough that points to uh, doing it right. Either that or it's about getting that large health kit and then doing the drop. Interesting. Okay, let's not get stalactited. Oh, that was close. I went backwards. I actually went backwards. That explains everything. So, okay, so... Now there's a bird. Why is there a bird all of a sudden? So if this is backwards, then... Where does that come from? Wait, can I just jump over this or maybe jump around it? And then work my way up to the slope. And just call it a day. I'm just gonna call it a day. We've done it. We've done it. Easy. Easy. 
And there's more seagulls everywhere. And there's dudes as well. And it's a bit more than a seagull, I guess. Lara, you are getting shot by a guy with a ski mask and you're focusing on the eagle. new guy? I think that is a new guy, because he's taken a lot of hits. Uh, yes, you can get on the snowmobile, by the way. It has its own music. So, uh, the snowmobile is our new vehicle of, uh, choice for this level. Get some Eurobeat going. Uh -huh. Hey, dropped a big health kit. And I would like to take the big health kit. Uh, I do remember that the, uh, the snowmobile is prone to killing you when you expect it. You don't need any more Eurobeat because I, uh, <laughs> picked up a secret, that's it. So, I think the whole point is that you want to get a key to activate the door. So let's, let's, uh, make sure I'm going carefully. There is a turbo button, which you're going to need, and it's all about doing these, uh, real crazy runs. Yes, you can run into someone as well. I'll see if I can do it. There we go. So you get, like, this kind of nice, like, open area. The whole point is that you've got to bounce all around and, uh, hop over ledges. It looks kind of jank, because it kind of is, to be honest, but it's kind of cool as well, so I don't mind. Here we go, oh, up on that ledge, narrow boy, up the side, and around the bumpy boy. And there were blocks in the way and I crashed and blew up. <laughs> Uh, take two, take two. Let's hit this guy this time. Call my friend to see you stream. Let's just say he did not sell out for a year for almost ten eyes, and now he did not have his. He doesn't have eyes anymore. What happened to his eyes? He didn't use his brand, did he? I always think it's like weird of uh, games that uh, their art style, I guess, ages in some way. Like obviously it's like a game from 1997 will never look as pristine as it once did. Uh, but I think that's also, you know, like can you just appreciate it for what it was at the time. So, oh there's leopards. There's leopards. Gosh, these leopards are getting me. These leopards are getting me. There we go, jeez. <laughs> New eyes will grow back. Nice. Uh... Where do I put these? Where do I put these? I guess I can move one of them so that it's not in the way? Oh, I guess I gotta move him into the, the hidey hole. Because I can't move him across right now. Unless they're... Yeah. And then you may be thinking, well, don't you block your way from coming up here? But it's like, well, you're immediately required to do a snowmobile jump afterwards, so... I, I love how I did the jumps, only to immediately crash the snowmobile into this and blow it up. <sighs> unabashed, unabashed, that's how I describe this game. It just, it just asks you to do things and you're like, yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, sure. Whatever you say, game, you know. <sighs> Shoot these leopards, you know. <laughs> Someone is, is 
gonna make a video on like player agency and then it's just like yes you you, you unwillingly accepted shooting leopards and lots of innocent men in cold blood i'm like nah man they were shooting first leopards will buy me first we are sitting in discord right now and he pointed out how strong she is for this oversized minecraft block i mean i assume this block is two meters tall and two meters wide and two meters deep so it's eight cubic meters of ice she's just pushing along which probably wouldn't be... Actually, yeah, no, that would be pretty big. Because uh, I think a mill of a milliliter of water is a gram. But a cubic meter is not a milliliter. It's a... Sorry, sorry. It's not a liter. It's a kiloliter. So it would actually be... Uh... What, a ton? And then there's eight. No, that, feel, that doesn't feel right. That doesn't sound right. Be a lot, of, a lot of water. We'll just say that. Okay. Time to do the jumps, but real. Oh. Uh, yes, it does control like the boat, except it goes off jumps. So uh, it's tank controls. I guess. Four times for one cube. Oh, is my math actually right on that one? Oof. Oof. That's okay. Granted, I guess Lara's also, you know, resisting the, uh, Tibetan cold by, uh, wearing the shortest pants imaginable while out in the middle of... Uh, it's, it's not quite Arctic, because Tibet's not really that far north. It's a mountain. I... Oh, oh. I got it right the first time. I, I, I'll get there, don't worry. So it'll be easier on the way back, because you don't have to do these jumps. I really love the vehicle sections. I think... I can't remember how many vehicle parts are on the... the next game, but the one after, I can definitely attest this. So quite a handful. Oh my gosh. Maybe I should be quick saving after each jump. We just want to see Lara do some real silly you know, loop de loop tricks on the snowmobile. I think I've played like flash games with uh, just as hilarious like sound design as well. I should probably save because Lara is probably gonna die and I I did not save since the top, I think. Take a small med, why not? There we go. There we go, did the jump. Okay, what is in store for us after after the jump? Uh more jump. And oh, for the snaking, for the dodging. Going over the slope. Small jumps. Cool. There's a bit off on the left. Did you spot that? Is that a secret? Was that just literally all that's in there? Uh, can't adjust the camera right enough. I don't think that is. I think that's actually the way to go. But. Real cheeky ledge. Like they, they want you to do just as narrow platforming, but in a snowmobile. Okay, so what's over here? We've got grenades. Cool. Everyone uh -huh. likes grenades. And some climbing. Even better. If there's one thing people like more than grenades, it's climbing. Oh, there's a switch. Nothing else. Okay, you, you know what this means. This means, uh... Hilarious running. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, 
Uh, get, get the snowmobile. And there's a guy shooting at me. And there's two guys shooting at me. They, I do appreciate they try and run out of the way as well. That's kind of cool. Oh, there's a bit bouncy. So many guys. And then a bit of a jump. So why not? Uh, yes, you did spot a secret there. <laughs> Random. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Random lever in the mountains. Why not? And then I love this. Because I always, I always get hit by this. And then Lara uh, somehow falls out in midair. You just go past and trigger all the snowballs. And then, uh... Dodging, ducking and weaving. And then we've got another big room where I'm not too sure if you're. Oh, yeah, 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 you definitely want We need to raise a bridge. There we go. I do like these vehicle sections though. They're, they're nice, fun changes of pace, especially after how many levels of swimming. Uh, is that a button? That's a key. No. <laughs> I've got the seraph, but that's not the key that I'm expecting. So maybe I gotta back out to. Oh boy, it's not. I'm a little worried, but. Let's pull this lever. It's not all the way... Where Where does this put me? Ah yes, this pit. Yes. I think they did drop the key in the bottom of the pit, except... <laughs> saw it! I found the key! <laughs> what was that door? I just... I guess the only thing- oh, oh, I'm going down. <laughs> I'm going down <laughs> into the pit. Uh... So I guess you gotta circle back. And, uh... Is this a safe place to, to dismount? I'm pretty sure this is a safe place, Lara. There you go. There you go. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to figure this one out in my head, but I'm pretty sure that there's just a key in there. Lara dies, Dr. Livesy Lara. With the Dark Souls death screen. Yeah, oh, dude, if someone mods this game and just adds a you died after every single, every single thing I do, I swear. This ledge is fun and all, but like, legit, like... You don't just climb down this side, because there's nothing on this side. You've got to climb down that side. Is the whole point of this just that- no, because then... you got to be able to climb up again. I'm trying to... yeah. I guess you should just be able to jump back. Like, like that, and you can stand on here. It's just the next ledge is a, a bit too far up, but hey, let's let's just jump down and figure it out as I go along. But I'm pretty sure, like that's this is where the key is. Yeah, the key is right there. Uh huh. And then we've got another room to traverse. I assume a way to get back, or does this go to that canyon bit that I just hopped? Oh, hi there. Oh uh, yes, my favorite glass windows, except they're made out of ice. Look at all these really rugged up dudes, and here's Lara just flexing that she doesn't need to wear pants. Maybe that's why they're really upset with her. I saw it, I saw it as well off the top of my head. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I fell for it. 
I can't believe I just fell for the stalactites again. Oh! Oh! It's so irritating. Oops. <laughs> Bit too far. Bit too far all the way down. It's okay. Up we go. Uh -huh. Pick up a key. At least you can eat 20 bullets in the face. That is true. Well, I guess Lara can as well to some extent. Apparently, apparently. Oh, <laughs> nice. Nice. Bring up the start menu and now it's hooked onto screen. Nice. I always got to be careful like what button I press, I swear. Because <laughs> uh, cause since this is uh, using... Um... Okay, uh, I'm not using like direct input or anything. I'm just mapping uh, keyboard controls to my controller. And unfortunately, the jump button is alt. So uh, anything goes, really. Anything goes. Uh, this does just go into the canyon. Cool. The only thing with the canyon is... Yeah, you get baited a little bit, because you think you're supposed to climb up there. And I'll, I'll show what's up here. But one, there's a pit in front of it, so that's fun. Oh, except it's got grenades. Is that a leopard? Uh huh. That is a leopard. <laughs> Let's get the leopard before he gets me. There's three of them! There's three whole leopards! You can't run away from me, I tell you that. And up the wall we go. It's a really big wall. <laughs> and yeah, I, this this was in the corner of my eye when uh when the camera changed during during the jump, uh -huh. and then it's just like, yep, that's that's it. They even put a leopard on the bridge. You, you can't possibly. This this jump looks so incredibly like video gaming. It's just like here's like a, a ledge on both sides. It's perfect for a jump. Bonk, 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 bonk. Okay. Alright, let's see how easy it is to get these. Actually, yeah. Oh, I was gonna say, like, should I switch weapons? Oh, 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 oh. There you go. Can't get me now, losers. <laughs> Burning through health, I tell you, though. How about the next game to be the first Doom? I, I've tossed in my head whether I should, like, whether the first Doom would be an interesting play. I definitely, I can tell you, I can breeze through, uh, I can probably breeze through the game in, in, uh, two streams, but, um, yeah, because, because Doom is a bit, like, abstract, um, and potentially it's like, I don't know, it could be a bit samey between levels, but I, I definitely feel alright to, to give it a run. I've got I've got something queued up for the next game though in particular because uh, as long as this game doesn't leak into October I've got a spooky game for October that I've that I've personally never played before so uh, it'll be it'll be fun for me and hopefully fun for the whole family and uh, yeah hopefully hopefully you enjoy my pain and suffering and what it will be uh, but that is for October. Uh, I expect to be trying to play through all of Tomb Raider 2 by then. Um, I'm probably going to have two more streams of uh, the main game of Tomb Raider 2, and then uh, there'll be 
maybe one, we'll see, uh, bonus stream for the gold levels, the extra levels that we do separately. Uh, will I succeed? <laughs> maybe. I don't know if I will succeed. Drawbridge key, here we go. Stick it in there. It goes up, you know? It's a, it's a drawbridge, it goes up. That's all it has to do. Um, I'll definitely say that, like, my knowledge of Tomb Raider has suddenly been thrown into jeopardy playing this game. Like, I've played this one, like, maybe one time fewer than the first game, and yet, I don't know, like, it just, it just blanks on me. Oh! More snowballs, more snowballs. It's okay. Oh, this is not too many more. I love the massive sound it makes. Why did we break the ice? And the whole point is, uh, it's over the room breaking the ice. Ah! Here we go. <laughs> the one key to rule them all. Uh -huh. That's the hut key. So now, now we work our way back. Every console after the NES, more platforms, more platforms. Oh, yeah, and you've also got guys chasing you. So. This will be fun. I mean, I guess the NES had a lot of platformers already, but... Can't chase me over a bridge, can he? Oh gosh, Leopard, get out! Oh no! Right, over the narrow bridge. Imagine Tomb Raider Mario Kart. There, there are a lot of Tomb Raider spin-offs that don't exist. They would make tremendously, like, interesting games. Because there's a, there's a lot of vehicles. Like, I, I mean, I know people will sometimes say that, like, Uncharted is just... Oops. Oops. I, I know a lot of people will say, like, Uncharted is just, like, modern Tomb Raider, and then Tomb Raider decided to reboot itself. But, like... Legitimately, like... I'm not very good at my jumps, apparently. Uh, but legitimately, like, uh... Like, there's so many vehicle parts in later Tomb Raiders. Uh... Where do I jump off from? There we go. Let's try it. Alright, now I'm back in this room, and I don't need to worry about anything other than I think if they spawn a snowmobile guy, I think... I guess they haven't, so we're doing okay. I don't think the snowmobile goes back up. So probably just to stop you from bringing the snowmobile back up with you. And there's leopards. Of course there's leopards. Road car with guns. GTA has already done like the the gun. Um, Guns on the vehicle, like bonus modes, haven't they? Uh huh. Does anyone remember Crash Tag Team Racing? Not, not Team Racing, and not Nitro Kart, but the other one. And they specifically added in like the ability to, like, uh, fuse with another guy's cart, and then you you end up uh, being a turret guy on it. Because that was the trend back then: turret gameplay. You had Jack X. There was a bunch of other games, so like Mario Kart Double Dash. It was just this weird trend of adding a guy as a turret on the car. Wouldn't you know, they had, uh, uh -huh. I assume that's machine pistol ammo? Is it, or automatic pistol ammo, maybe? Well, that's Uzi, so that's certainly uh -huh. fine. Would you look at that? A bundle of uh -huh. health. With the Red Cross logo that you're not allowed to use anymore. I only uh, complete one game from the Insane Trilogy on 102%. They're definitely tricky games, the, the Crash Trilogies. Maybe I'll play them at some point on stream. Oh my god. 
gosh. You got a couple. There you go. That's one. Ours are jumping all over. These guys are taking their sweet time dying. Jeez, is that just three of them? And how much how much ammo did you drop? Uh -huh. Well, you dropped some ammo, so that's cool. This guy dropped health, uh -huh. big health. Good on him. And this guy dropped uh -huh. more ammo. Cool. So I think the level just ends there. I can't remember what what's more uh, beyond here, beyond beyond the level. Oh, there's a big room. There's a big... Oh, I think I remember. You gotta take out some guys on the snowmobiles yourself. Yep. Here he comes. Okay, let's get him with the, uh... The automatic pistols. Let's do it. Because he shoots you as well if he's facing you. But yeah, of course, naturally, he runs you over as well. Or he can shoot you as well. That works too. I think I, I explicitly saved there, but... Man, you know, they don't play nice. Every time she shoots around me, she says, uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. Oh, well, I got run over. Even better. And the aha is from the, the last voice actor as well of Lara. Alright, he just turned on the dime. He just turned on the dime. Maybe I should just bolt to the other side. Let's just let's just make a runner. Whoa. Unless he drops a key. Nah. I think we're good. Oh, it's not that he drops a key, it's that he drops the snowmobile! <laughs> oh no! Either that, or I still need my snowmobile. Nah, I'm pretty sure I just shoot him with his. Ah, oh, it's the fact that, like, he gets stuck on his own geometry and he's going all over the place. Maybe I should just, like, find my way back up. Like, I'm just gonna go here and just jump back up. Sorry, bro. No fun for you today. Except he's gonna, he's gonna still shoot me from a distance. Alright, he's just, he's riding his snowmobile like it's nobody's business over there, and... Whoa, and I'm dead. Oh my gosh. This guy is not letting me have my fun times. I think the best place is probably on this platform in the middle. That way he can't get to me. I can keep getting to him and he can... I... Wonderful. Wunderbar. Wunderbar. The start menu every single time. That's what you get when you pause while shooting. What is the shoot button on my thing? It'll be control. And then... Or is this escape? I guess, is that it? Control escape opens up the start menu? Never knew that. There you go. All that, just to get his snowmobile back, instead of just letting me, you know, ride my own again. Also, uh... There you go. You can shoot on this one. He's got a gun. He's got a gun. That's cool. Instead of a boost, so uh, we're gonna hope that this naturally goes forward. It does not naturally go forward enough. So if this doesn't boost, uh, how do you go fast enough? How do you go fast enough? It's been a whole hour, 40 minutes to teach me almost all the button combinations in college. I did not know Control Escape. Uh, there's like a lot of like weird little ones, but... Ah yes. 
proper way to get over that ledge, by the way. I know control shift escape to open up the task manager, which used to you know, used to be control alt delete and then control alt delete became more of a power menu. I think you've gotta just take out a dude in an arena there. Well no, it's just a big room with a tiny hole at the end. Probably a lot harder on paper. They even made some music, and the music doesn't go on for long enough, so that's okay. So I assume I push the block in. Find a secret little, secret little passageway in here, or there you go. Well, I can push the block far enough that I've still got the ability to bring the snowmobile. So let's do it. Oh, there's two guys. Quick. Before they get onto the other free snowmobiles. So where do we go from here? We go down. Uh, this will be the last half of the stream, yeah. It is, it is well past the expected bedtime. That is not how you descend onto this guy. Imagine like hiding on this ledge and you drive a snowmobile down onto them. And I, I wanted to drive the snowmobile further, but... It's a bit of a ledge. Okay, he is hitting me. I am not hitting him. And now I am hitting him and he's not hitting me. Circle of life. Uh, last time he took more than 45 levels. The difference is, is that in this stream I have done three levels, so... The fact that it's still been a two and a half hour stream is, uh... Kind of impressive. Um, so this would be level 11. There are 18 levels in total, so I've got to somehow pace uh, 7 over the next stream. Or next two streams, rather. Uh, and then I'll be the last one we spent almost 30 minutes trying to understand. That only happened twice. At least this level I understand what's going on. Uh... This is a bit of a ledge. I could probably drop down, but nope, nope. It's 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 too much of a ledge. And that also felt like a kind of weird jump up there. So I want to say like the the. The thing that I'm half anticipating is that you drive the snowmobile directly forward into the water. Yeah. <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe I, I, I saw it. I was like, nah. There you go. Well, now I'm down here. Now what? Ah. A little tiny hole in the middle of the wall there. I'm very certain this level doesn't have too much more. Look at that. We're going through a little tiny... There. I did it. I did it. I predicted it. I'm a genius. So there we go. That's that's how we do it. Uh, so now uh, you shall encounter the... Well, actually, let's just walk forward. Just a moment. Because I know that this level starts off with something. No more Tibetan mountains. Or I guess we still have Tibetan mountains. But we have a... Uh, we have a bit of a kerfuffle here. This is the, uh, the, uh, what is it, the, what they call it? Barkang Monastery. There you go. Lots lots of dudes that you don't necessarily shoot all of them as well, so. There you go. Anyways, with that, I will...
yep, cool, the shortcuts don't work, cool. So with that, I will thank you all so very much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the stream and you enjoyed the train wreck that is my internet not dying actually at all, there are zero drop frames from network, so that's neat. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed the stream of me rambling around, uh, feel free to follow where I'll stream next week and the bot will be on YouTube if you missed any of it. Uh, yeah, and if you uh, didn't enjoy it, then uh, you can still show up next week. I won't stop you. Uh, if you like being alerted about there is a spider crawling along my wall, that is gonna absolutely bug me out. But um, Tish, it's a classic Australian thing. It's like, oh yeah, there's a spider there, why not? It's like a little tiny one, like a little gnat one, not like actual like terrifying ones. The really terrifying ones exclusively stay outdoors. They never come in. And if they do, then they're kind of idiots, because we got Raid, we got Morty, we got all the, we got all the bug, zap, uh, bug sprays to stop them, so. Anyways, stay safe, eat your greens, and don't stay up too late. Catch you, fellas.